This video will be going over the completion of the request for funding form. When you log into the TN CAMS website, you will be brought to your dashboard and it will look very similar to this. In this scenario, this would be a test company, but your company's name would be here and notice the mailing address. Here, you will see the amount of your award, the amount paid, the amount in process and the amount unpaid. The amount unpaid represents amounts that were not reimbursed because they did not comply with the guidelines and were not eligible expenses. If you scroll down, you will see the status of all requests for fundings or RFF as we will call them. It is highly encouraged that you only submit one RFF. You will be able to see the date you submitted, the date it was last updated and the workflow status. To submit a reimbursement request, click on the RFF form link at the top. Here, you will answer a series of questions and upload your required supporting documentation. Please note, this system is being used by multiple programs in the state of Tennessee. So while some of the questions might not be applicable or make sense in your context, they are there for another program. So the first question is, is this a joint expense with another entity? For your purposes, you should answer no. Next couple of questions. Have you applied for any other federal funding for the expenses for which you are seeking reimbursements in this request? Have you been granted any other federal funds for the expenses for which you are seeking a reimbursement in this request? I want to emphasize the in this request part of that. You should only answer yes if you have applied for or received other federal funding such as PPP or EIDL loans for expenses that were incurred during the period May 1st, 2020 through August 31st, 2020. Next is the date of, your, of the expense. If you are submitting for direct costs, the expense incurred date should be the date you receive delivery. If you are submitting for business interruption, you should select yes for multiple dates and input the dates you are claiming business interruption. Expense start date and expense send date, you'd select it. Remember, these funds must be incurred from May 1, 2020 through August 31, 2020. The next question is the request amount. The amount should be the amount per the invoice for the direct expense you are claiming or the decrease in net income from the eligible period of May 1, 2020 through August 31st, 2020. This amount will be the amount you calculated on the application or the online calculator. And the last question is the expense category. For the purposes of the CERG program, the small business assistance will be used for both business interruption and direct expenses. So you'd have small business assistance for the expense category. In the additional information section, this is the place where you need to clearly document how this expense is related to COVID and the program you're approved for. When submitting for business interruption, include why you had a decrease in revenue, whether it was mandatory or voluntary closures, or even the decreases in demand. For the direct expenses, explain how they were in response for the COVID-19 pandemic, such as purchasing of face masks to combat COVID, where prior to COVID-19, you would not have purchased those face masks. Include in your narrative if you have received certification with the state of Tennessee as a diversity business enterprise. You'd also put what government agency that you are registered with and be able to provide documentation proving that. You will then upload supporting, doc supporting required documents and you can upload as many documents as you need. To upload more than just one, you would simply click the plus here to add another row. You'd also click, uh, you can put a number here to add multiple rows. See if I wanna add five rows, I would click that and add. And then I would simply click choose file and select the location of the supporting document. Now the following documents will be required to be submitted for business interruption claims. A copy of your most recently filed IRS tax return, whether it was the 1040 with Schedule C, 1120, 1120S, the 1065, or the 990. A completed IRS form W-9 providing identifying information required for payments bank statements for the period May 1 to August 31, 2019, and May 1 to August 31, 2020. This will be known as your expense period. Current and prior year balance sheet 
and income statements for the expense period. Supporting documentation for eligible direct expenses and other business interruption expenses as requested. This could be invoices, canceled checks, proof of receipt. Ownership documentation, such as the articles of incorporation or partnership agreements. Proof of diversity business enterprise eligibility, such as disability documentation, a long form birth certificate, a tribal card, etc. Those were the following documents for the business interruption claim. Now these next documents that I'm about to mention will be for the direct expense claim. A copy of your most recently filed RS tax return, such as the 1040 with Schedule C, 1120, 1120S, 1065, and the 990. A completed RS Form W-9 proving identifying information required for payments. The invoice slash receipts supporting expenses claimed. This can include the date of purchase, the vendor name and address, brief description of items that are purchased, and the cost of items. You will also need the shipping slash receiving document showing the date of receipt if applicable a check copy or other proof of payment. The very last step will be to read the statement and the terms and conditions, and then click to certify that you acknowledge them and hit submit. Please note a copy of these terms and conditions should have been attached to the award notification email, but you can always find a copy by clicking of, in the RFF form by clicking on the hyperlink right here. Now, when you come back in after you hit submit and you come back to your dashboard, you will see the additional amount as in process and see the RFF bottom at the bottom to track the status. From here, the RFF will go through a review and testing process by the program team. If they have questions or request additional clarification, they will send it back to you immediately. To modify, you should be notified via email, and a coordinator may reach out to you to provide clarity on the next step. Once approved, your RFF will be paid by the state of Tennessee, and our goal is to process payments daily. But please note, depending on volume, it may take longer. We expect that the average application with all document, documentation provided at RFF submission will be paid within four to six weeks. Now this concludes this tutorial and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.